In this video, I'm going to talk about the way in which energy is transmitted between two objects. Now, before I get started, I do want to tell you that chemists use the word light and energy interchangeably. And we also use the term electromagnetic radiation to refer to energy. So all three of these words, light, energy, and electromagnetic radiation, they all mean the same thing. Electromagnetic radiation, sometimes we abbreviate EMR. In this video, I'm gonna try really hard to just stick to the one term, energy. I might occasionally use the term light, um, but I'm gonna do my best. Like I said, I'm gonna do my best to just say energy. So again, we're talking about the way that energy is transmitted between two objects. For example, when the sun transmits energy down to earth where it is absorbed by a flower. When energy is transmitted between two objects, it moves between those two objects in a wave-like path. So I'm gonna draw kind of a squiggly line that shows the light, the energy being transmitted from the sun down to the plant. With all waves, there's a couple of different ways that we can quantify the wave or describe the wave. So we're gonna draw a wave right here. It's not a very good looking wave. One of the ways that we can describe a wave is with its wavelength. The wavelength is the distance between any two identical points on the wave. So for example, the distance between two low points or maybe the distance between two high points. You get to choose which kind of points you would like to measure. So this distance right here, we would call the wavelength. In science, we abbreviate wavelength with the Greek letter lambda. Kind of looks like an upside down and backwards Why? that is pronounced lambda. And we're going to define wavelength as the distance between two identical points on the wave. The wavelength is measured in some sort of derivative of a meter, depending on what the actual wavelength is. So it's a very long wavelength, we might choose to measure it in kilometers. If it's a very short wavelength, we might choose to measure it in nanometers. Another way that we can describe the wave of energy is with its frequency. Now to explain frequency to you, I'm going to draw another wave down here. Again, this is not a very good looking wave. When we're measuring the frequency of a wave, what we're gonna do is select a point on the wave. For example, let's select the high points. We're gonna select all of the high points on this wave, and we're gonna identify uh, like a finish line, kind of like a finish line that you would cross if you're running a race. So our finish line is right here. We're also gonna choose a specific amount of time. Like let's say that we choose one minute of time. What we're going to do is we're gonna watch this wave as it moves, because it's traveling, as it moves past the finish line, we're gonna watch it, and we're gonna count how many times those high points pass the finish line. So we're gonna start a timer, and again, I said we're gonna set our stopwatch for one minute, and we're just gonna count how many, how many high points go by in one minute. So it might be something like this, one, two, three, four, five, let's say that was a minute. And so the number of high points that pass in any given particular amount of time is called the frequency. The frequency is also given a Greek letter abbreviation. It's given the abbreviation Greek letter nu, that's spelled N-U, kind of looks like a fancy V or a fancy U. And the frequency is defined as the number of wavelengths which we're identifying by watching the identical point go by. Each one of these is a wavelength. So we're counting the number of wavelengths that are passing an identified or a given point, our finish line, the number of wavelengths that are passing this finish line in one second. So when we're actually measuring the frequency, we're going to do whatever kind of math we need to do to um, to put it in context of one second. The units of the frequency are always going to be, now these are kind of weird units, the units of the frequency are per second. Because we're basically counting, we're basically saying that it went by the finish line five times per second. 
or 10 times per second. So in terms of representing those units, they might be seconds to the minus one, they might be one over seconds, or we actually have the unit hertz, capital H, lowercase z, which is just a symbolic way of communicating second to the minus one or one over second. So hertz per second or one over second, these are all appropriate units of frequency. Now, regardless of what the energy's wavelength might be and what its frequency might be, all energy travels at the exact same speed. And we refer to this as the speed of light. Again, because keeping in mind that the word light and energy are interchangeable. So the speed of energy, the speed of light basically means the same thing. And the speed of light, the speed of our energy is three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. We can calculate the speed of light by multiplying the wavelength of the light times the frequency of the light. So whatever the wavelength might be and whatever the frequency might be, multiply those two numbers together, it's always going to be working out to be three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. So what does that tell, the, tell us about light? Well, it tells us that if we have light with a very small wavelength, that tiny, tiny wavelength must be balanced out by a very high frequency. So when we have light with a teeny tiny wavelength, that light has to be really moving fast. And then con uh, on the other side, flip side to that, if we have light with a really big wavelength, it needs to have a really small frequency. So if we have light with a huge wavelength, that's not really a very big wavelength, that's a big amplitude. If we have light that has a big wavelength, that light has to be moving really, 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 really slow. The symbol for the speed of light is a lowercase c. So you might see the equation c equals lambda nu um, written instead of this form right here. C is just this constant 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So as I mentioned, there the light does not, even though it has a uniform speed, light does not all have the same wavelength and it does not all have the same frequency. The frequency and wavelength of light varies depending on the type of light. So what we're going to do is kind of chart out the different types of light, or the different types of energy, or the different types of electromagnetic radiation, whatever word you would like to use. We're basically just gonna make a line and on this line, we are going, I'm gonna plot all the different types of, of energy. And I'm not trying to indicate anything with the distances that I put between these two objects. So over here on this side, oops, on this side, I'm going to put radio. Radio energy is one of the extremes of the different types of light. And on the other end, I'm going to put gamma. That's our other extreme. This sometimes is referred to as gamma ray. And this radio is literally like the radio that you would have in your car. Radio energy is very low energy. It is the lowest energy. And gamma is the highest energy, or I'm using capital E to abbreviate energy. And all the other types of radiation are in between radio and gamma. And again, I'm not drawing their relative positions to scale. The next lowest form of energy is microwave. And then we have infrared. And this, you might be curious, microwave, this is the same type of energy that is used in your microwave ovens. You can see that in your microwave oven, we're talking about very low energy. Infrared, which is, we know, the energy that's associated with heat. And after infrared, we have visible energy. Now here it makes more sense to say visible light because that's what we refer to it in everyday English. And this is visible light is the light that we can see with our eyes. So the light that's colored coming from our light bulbs, things like that. And above that we have ultraviolet. Once we get here on this spectrum of the different types of energy, 
we get into the types of energy that are potentially harmful to humans with a certain amount of exposure depending on the type of light. So everything down in this area is light that's not harmful to humans. And then as we go this way, this is where it becomes harmful to humans. After ultraviolet, we have x-ray. And then again, we have gamma at the highest, highest type of energy. Now, radio having the absolute lowest form of energy, it also has the largest wavelength. And because it has the largest wavelength, that means that it has the smallest frequency. And this is one of the reasons why radio waves and microwaves are not harmful. The wavelengths are very, 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 very large, and we observe that they are too large to penetrate through our skin and do any kind of damage to our bodies. On the other side of the spectrum, the high energy gamma rays, these have the smallest wavelength, and they have the highest frequency. So these are the, this is the type of energy that we need to be concerned about, these little teeny tiny wavelengths that are very easily uh, able to penetrate right through our skin into our body and do damage. Now, if you get online or open up your textbook, you're going to find a figure that looks a lot like this. It might be reversed, so it might have gamma on this side and radio on this side, and everything would be turned around in that case. But if you get online or get in your textbook and just look up or search electromagnetic radiation spectrum, I'll write that up here on top, electromagnetic radiation spectrum, you're going to be able to find a ton of of really great figures that I didn't want to put on here because I don't want to violate any sort of copyright. But you're going to be able to find really great figures that not only show all of this type of information, but actually also give you appropriate wavelengths and frequencies for each of these types of radiation. And this will be really helpful in homework problems where it might say something like, um, what type of radiation has a wavelength of 5 times 10 to the minus 2 meters? Um, this particular chart right here is not going to be helpful because there aren't any numbers on it. But if you look a figure up on the internet, you'll be able to find the actual increments of what the wavelengths are and what the frequencies are for each of these gaps. And that will help you identify different types of energy based on its wavelength or its frequency.